If you're building any application, any SaaS or any software, there's always this burning question that should I roll out my own authentication system or should I be relied on some third party solutions like Clerk? And there are hundreds, not even thousands of real developers who will say, you should always roll out your own auth. The third party auth can be expensive, can be logged into third party. And there are so many advices like that. But the real truth is it always depends. And you should really watch this video to understand that when you should really roll out your own authentication system, which is also a good thing, and when you should be dependent on the third party application systems like Clerk, which is also a good thing. But you really need to understand what is the use case of it and to what extent you will be using the developer's time in building the application. So this is exactly what we are going to be dealing up with this. In this entire video uh, is going to be a walkthrough that at what stage you should be rolling out your own authentication system and when you should be relying on that. I hope this is fun. And this is all based on experience that I have gone through of building uh, full-fledged SaaS, which are running from the last 10 years, as well as some of the SaaS which are relatively new and we are using them as an internal portal in our application. So we have both of the use cases coming up. So let me take you on the screen and walk you through that when actually should auth make sense and when you should be rolling out. So again, there is nobody wrong here and it all is a use case dependent. So without wasting any more time, first let me walk you through. There are three phases usually when you actually build any application. Uh, the first one is actually phase one. Uh, this is a phase which is you just want to get started. Uh, this is the lowest kind of a phase. After that, we have this uh, phase two not 21, definitely, this is a phase two. This is a bit of a bigger phase compared to the phase one. And then there is a phase three, which is a humongous phase in itself. And definitely we need to have this one as pretty big and gigantic. So this is the phase one where you have no idea whether anybody, even a single guy or a single user will be interested in your application. So what kind of a user base we are expecting? We have just created the application and I would just arbitrary put a number of 0 to 100. These are the people I am expecting. I have no idea whether this SaaS will work or not, or even possibly this could be my own personal solution, which I am passionate about. This is just solving my problem, nobody else's. This is the phase where the phase one goes on. The phase two is probably where you are going aggressively for the marketing or probably are raising funds or looking forward and you have a decent traction. This, I would say anywhere between, uh, let's just say we go for 101, uh, 101 to anywhere between uh, 5,000 of or 10,000, maybe 10,000 would be a good number, 10,000 paid users. If you have all 10,000 as a free users, again, it's not really feasible, but let's just go for as uh, 101 to 10,000 as a paid user. This is the, your second phase. And the third phase obviously is anywhere above uh, 10,000. Let's just say we just go for a 25 or maybe 25,000 plus user, anywhere above that. So this is my range of the users. And again, I always recommend that there are some times when you want to raise your application as for a free user, just to try that they use it. And if it, the application is really worth it, just like OpenAI has taught all of us, that after a certain point, charge the user, and if your application dies down, that's good. That is good because it was not a product which was meant to be converted into business anytime. So this is the whole phases we have. So in the phase one, I highly, highly recommend to use services uh, like Clerk or any other service which you are a big fan of. I, I love Clerk because it's super simple and work on with this. And to your surprise, I even would say that once you are here, I would still recommend you to go with the clerk because this is the phase, the first phase is where nobody is going to be on your website or not be on your website because you have a good authentication system. Nobody cares about it. People care about your product. People care about what software, what feature you're giving. And if you're spending, let's just say 50% or 60% of your time in just setting up authentication or user management, that is not a good business decision in any case. Even when you are in the phase two, when you're trying to monetize your application, again, just think about yourself and make this decision. Should your be focused, should be on developing the feature so that you can onboard a paid user? Or should your be feature priority should be, hey, I'll design my own wait list or I'll be designing my own SSO. Once you're in the phase three, then it totally depends on you, whether you are able to crack a deal so that you can make more money or you want to roll out your own authentication. And some of you might be wondering, what's the big deal? Authentication usually looks like, okay, a few features. Maybe we want to register a user. Maybe we want to log in a user. Uh, maybe some of the JWTs uh, that we want to work on with. Uh, probably uh, forgot password. 
probably that's that's the most we want to go for forgot password or maybe reset password that is it but turns out this is not your authentication authentication is way more bigger than this let me give you a brief uh, glimpse of it which i was teaching in my uh, one of the cohort so if you go up here this is the authentication we discussed about so there are database connection accepting the data then the validation uh, hashing tokens cookies middleware routings uh, then we have all these uh, things notice here google auth open id connect open id standards uh, jwks which is not jwts saml oauth refresh token access there's so much. I'm not scaring you out, but this is how it goes. And even if you look at the clerk interface, yes, you can build all of them. I have been saying this. Yes, anybody can just go ahead and build this up. But if you just look at this, uh, the amount of things that you might have to do, and again, I need to close this, my calendar. Uh, there we go. If you just go the, like the basic that, hey, I am public for signing up the application, or maybe right now I want just 10 users to test them out. I want to call them up. I can just click on this waiting list and that's it. It's done. I don't have to create the whole components and stuff. And again, I know you can do it and that should, you should do it to, to learn at least, but there's so much more. Like if I have to just go with the SSO connections and come on, load it fast, probably my internet. If I just go into the SSO connection, uh, notice here, we can just go ahead and add more providers, but look at this for all domains and stuff. Yes, you have to code this out. Multi-factor authentication. Yeah, you can just go ahead and enable it. And my whole point behind this video is not to encourage you on the clerk or uh, discourage you from on building of the application. But again, there is a point, there is a time when you roll out your own authentication system and there is a point when you focus on building your own SaaS. So yes, I 100% agree that there are phases and there are phases and time when you want to roll out your own authentication system, but there is also a time when you need to focus on your business, your features and all of your working. So don't think that the authentication is just this much thing. If you are doing this, you are making a mistake. It's a whole user management thing where you also need to be prepared for the attacks. You also need to be prepared for the user accessibility that maybe Google login is good or maybe for my business, just the Discord login makes sense, nothing else. Rest of the things people will pay not for the login, but actually for all of these things. So again, not just a video and feel free to use any authentication library which you want to use. I just use Clerk as an example, but feel free to pick up whatever you want to have in this one. But again, always remember just one thing which I always recommend and advise to people. Focus on what you want to build and what you want to sell to the user as a software. Authentication is just a layer on top of it so that your system cannot be abused. Always think about what problem this authentication is solving. If you go too much with the sentiments in just the authentication system, no, this, is, this doesn't work. Especially if you're consulting with anybody, try to consult with different people. Somebody who has built a big SaaS application will always recommend you roll out your own auth because he is on that phase. If somebody who has tried and is on the MVP phase, he'll say, no, I don't want to waste my time in that. So always consult with different variation of the people. Consulting with somebody who has just worked on team lead always on Microsoft and Google will give you that kind of advice because they work on that scale. But somebody talking to who is just a beginner in the startup world will also give you some really crucial advice. So always consult with different people, take advice with always grain of salt and just figure out what's more important for you. So this was just an advice video. I thought this advice needs to be out there because there is so much talk about authentication, but somebody needs to understand. And in fact, all of the people need to understand it all depends where you are in the phase of the life of the startup and that will always generate the best result for you, all right? So just a simple advice for you for using the best authentication system, whichever makes sense to you. That is it for this video and let's catch up in the next one.